I'm Carolyn. I'm the Children's Librarian at Battersea and York Gardens Libraries in Wandsworth, London, United Kingdom. And this is another episode of Story Explorers, where we, the Children's Librarians at Wandsworth Libraries, take you through some books for children and teens that we think you will love. Uh, these go up every Saturday at 3 p.m. So there's lots um, from over the past year, basically, that you can watch and enjoy. Today I am talking about the Carnegie Kate Greenaway Awards and these are the oldest children's book awards in the United Kingdom and they are awarded by children's librarians. So these recommendations today are not just from me, they're from a panel of expert children's librarian judges uh, about what they think is some of the best published in children's literature this year. There's two awards, the Carnegie Awards are uh, for books published in English in the UK for children or teens. So they're like novels, uh, maybe some poetry uh, for the middle grade and teen ages. The Kate Greenaway Awards are specifically for illustrations. So they're usually picture books or graphic novels that are great stories in and of themselves, but are really enhanced and made beautiful by the unique uh, illustrations and visuals in them. So you can reserve any of these books online to collect at your local Wandsworth Library branch. And then if you read them, let us know which one you think should be the winners because this is the short list. So these are the titles they've narrowed them down to from the nominations and one of these, well, two of these will be the winner. One will win the Carnegie Award and one will win the Kate Greenaway Award. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. So I'm going to start with the Kate Greenaway Awards. So this is for illustration in children's literature. Um, and I'm going to start with one that you might recognize the author and illustrator of. She has previously won the Kate Greenaway Medal, as you can see here. It is called Arlo the Lion Who Couldn't Sleep, and it is by Catherine Rayner. And as you can see, it is in her signature style that you might recognize from books like Augustus and His Smile, um, and or Solomon the Crocodile. So they're really quite artistically done and really beautiful depictions of the magic of daytime and of nighttime told through the eyes of Arlo, the lion who couldn't sleep. So if you are a fan of Katherine Rayner already, this is a great one because it has the artistic appeal that adults love and is also a really sweet story for children too, especially if they need some help getting to sleep. The next one is um, by a fellow called Pete Oswald, and it is called Hike. And I would recommend this for fans of maybe the duo of Mac Barnett and John Classen, the like, I want my hat back, that kind of thing. This is actually a wordless picture book. It is absolutely just a story told through pictures, which is perfect for this awards theme. And it is, of course, about a dad and a child on their way to a hike. And it really beautifully depicts the story of a journey, all the amazing things that they discover together. This would be a good one for an advanced reader who um, just wants a little break and wants to maybe make up their own story. And it's also a really great one for teaching early literacy uh, for pre-readers because they can kind of read the pictures and tell you what's going on in the story. So it's a really wonderful one to read together, just like a hike is a wonderful adventure to go on together. And that's Hike by Pete Oswald. The next one is called It's a No Money Day and it's by Kate Milner. She's won several awards as well. Uh, she also wrote and illustrated the book called My Name is Not Refugee, which is kind of a similar series. This is a, again, of course, beautifully illustrated story about a child and a mom who are having a no money day. So sometimes they have days where they can go out and buy something, but other days they have to get by on very little and on the generosity of others. So it's about waiting for the things that she want. It's about struggling through hard times. Um, it's a really sensitive portrayal of poverty for children who may or may not be experiencing it 
themselves. Um, and it talks about the food bank and the different things they dream of buying one day. Um, and yeah, it's a very sweet story and the gentle illustrations add to it being a very um, sensitive touch on what can be a tough topic for some. So that's It's a No Money Day by Kate Milner. Next is this beautiful book, Starbird by Sharon King Chai. Um, and as you can see, it has Hopefully you can see that it has a lot of like metallics and bright colors in it all throughout the book. The illustrations are so fun to look at uh, for both children and adults and a very creative use of light and dark and color that ties in well to the story, which is the story of the Starbird and the Moon King. Um, so it's a fairy tale, um, but just told in a really beautiful, modern, but visual way um, and it would make a great classic or a great gift book i think so that's starboard by sharon king chai next is small in the city by sydney smith and this this is a picture book but it has a bit of a graphic novel feel to it um, and it is about a child who knows what it's like to feel small in the city so it might be relatable to a lot of our london children um, or it's a good insight into what it might like be like to live in a city if you do not um, and I like that the illustrations are on one page and the text is big and bold and high contrast on the other it's an easy one to read um, and it's really beautifully told um, in a simple, straightforward way, but that still makes good use of metaphor and imagery to convey what it's like to live in a city. So that is Small in the City by Sydney Smith, who has also previously won the Kate Greenway Medal in 2018. Next is a bit more of a graphic novel, kind of between a graphic novel and a picture book. It's called I Go Quiet by David Wiene, um, and it is very original. It's a unique, imaginative story with very detailed illustrations. Um, there, it's a little a touch creepy, but it is a nice story about um, what it feels like to be quiet and to maybe feel a bit shy and sometimes overwhelmed, but it conveys it in a very soft, beautiful way where the illustrations tell a great deal of the story um, in a way I think many children and grown-ups can relate to. Uh, so that is called I Go Quiet by David Wiener. Wiener or Wienet. <laughs> now the last two nominated for the Kate Greenaway Award we don't have the physical copies in our libraries yet because um, we have them on order. So they will be there soon to reserve. So I just have some printouts of the covers here. This one is called The Bird With Me by Sarah Lundberg. And um, because we don't have it yet, I haven't had the chance to read it. But it's another um, kind of metaphorical story about being a person and it's a good one to instill empathy and as you can see it has very sort of artistic painting like illustrations to it so that's called the bird within me by sarah lundberg and the last one is called how the stars came to be by punam mystery and you might recognize these illustrations um there's a couple of other picture books she's done i think with chitra soundar which are kind fairy tale esque stories about family and love and relationships. So, How the Stars Came to Be is a retelling of a folk tale with these kind of almost tapestry like illustrations that are really quite detailed and, um, and beautiful to look at. So, I can't wait to read that one as well. So that's the shortlist for the Kate Green Award. We have How the Stars Came to Be by Poonam Mystery, The Bird Within Me by Sarah Lundberg, I Go Quiet by David Wiemey, Small in the City by Sydney Smith,
Starbird by Sharon King Chai. It's a No Money Day by Kate Milner. Hike by Pete Oswald. And Arlo, The Lion Who Couldn't Sleep by Katherine Rayner. And if I had to pick one to win, I haven't read all of them um, because we don't have a couple of them. So I can't really say for sure. And honestly, if any of them won, it would be well-deserved. But I really like Hike by Pete Oswald because I think it takes a special kind of artist indeed to tell a complex and captivating story uh, through pictures only. So I think that's a real feat, um, but we'll see. Reserve them if you can, find time to read them all, and let me know what you think. Which one do you think will win? They're all well worth the read. Next, I'm going to talk about the Carnegie Awards. These are awards for books written in English, published in the UK for children and teens, so we're more into novels territory. But there's also some poetry on the list, so I'm going to start with three books that are all sort of novels in verse. I one long story told through multiple poems. The first one is The Girl Who Became a Tree by Joseph Coelho, and it's illustrated by Kate Milner, who you might recognize from this book, also nominated for a Kate Greenaway Award. And it is a retelling of the legend of Daphne and Apollo, in which Daphne is turned into a tree. Um, but it's told through a modern perspective. As you can see there, she has a video game controller um, in their hand. So uh, it's, it takes that legend into a modern setting and tells the tale through some very poetic and um, metaphoric language, just like a lot of legends and myths. Um, so that's a really beautiful one. And of course, the illustrations are great too. The next one is called Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. She also wrote The Poet X and um, With the Fire on High. So if you've read those, then you can expect something similar. Um, but this one is all through poetry. And it is told from the perspective of two half sisters who have a different relationship with their shared father, um, who unfortunately dies in this book. And through grappling with their grief, they learn a lot about their father and each other and themselves. Um, and yeah, the, they help each other to navigate that in kind of a very complex way. Um, and the verse really adds an element to the dual perspective um, because it really gives a sense of, of different voices um, when you are sort of going back and forth between the poems. So that's a really lovely one that is also supposed to be a very good audiobook if you prefer to listen to your books. And next is another novel in verse called Run Rebel by Manjeet Nan. And it is about a girl who feels very trapped by her family's, particularly her father's expectations. And she wants to fight more for her freedom and the freedom of other women as well. Um, so the poems are very um, relatable. They have a very relatable teenage voice, but with this sort of higher um, calling, higher cause. It's, it's political, it's emotional, um, and it's also very personal. But I think people from all backgrounds will find elements of it, of it relatable, um, even though her example is a bit more extreme. Um, so yeah, that's called Run Rebel. So that's a teen one. Clap When You Land is also a teen one. And this one is also a teen one. So just to be aware that there is some teen content in those ones. I'll do my last two teen ones. Though, I mean, of course, people of any age can enjoy these books. Um, this one is called The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. Um, who has won this medal before, and this takes place in Spain in 1957. Um, it's a historical uh, novel, as you can tell, um, about the fascist dictatorship of General Franco. Um, so there's a kind of dark mystery story to this, um, interwoven through the real dark story of that historical time and Place. And Ruta Sepetis is, is quite good at infusing her stories with different perspectives, some that might be uncomfortable, um, but are important to acknowledge as a part of history 
nonetheless, and really um, beautifully written and immersive scene setting as well. This one is called On Midnight Beach. It's another historical novel, but a bit uh, less further back in time. It's 1976. It's the summer. It's about teenagers um, in the summer with a kind of dangerous edge to it. Um, there's dolphins <laughs> turn up, which is unusual, and this town kind of becomes kind of obsessed with it. And then there's also this very dangerous love interest involved. So yeah, it's, it's in the tradition of a lot of teen classics during a hot, heady summer in the 70s um, with a, yeah, a spooky, thrillery edge to it. Okay, and the last three are more middle grade. So they're more for ages about eight to 12, but you know, those are very flexible. I enjoy all these books myself. This one is called Look Both Ways by Jason Reynolds. And it's kind of a collection of short stories, but they're all linked. And a group of um, school children are telling tales to each other on their way home and it's organized by street names so each street they go down has a different story so it kind of reminds me of like a modern um, city setting retelling of the Canterbury Tales or something um, and the stories are sort of some ridiculous some real-life situation inspired um, some funny some dramatic and adventurous and so just really a, a fun read and the stories go well together while also being kind of their own thing. Um, so yeah, that's a really fun one. Look Both Ways by Jason Reynolds. Next is The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. She also wrote The House with Chicken Legs, um, which uh, was a very popular one. And this is about a girl who was found abandoned in a bear cave as a baby. Um, and there's just sort of like strange goings ons in her village that she seems connected to and a big adventure occurs. Um, and the background of it is really um, fairy tales and every few pages there actually is a retelling of a fairy tale connected to the story. And there's also some nice illustrations, uh, little illustrations throughout, not too many. Um, but it's it's got a real magical realism fairy tale element to it while also being a uh, quickly paced adventure and I think if, if someone likes this they might also like the next book on the list which is Echo Mountain by Lauren Woke. Uh, she has been nominated a, a few times before and she writes really kind of family stories or, emotional relationship-based stories centered on a kind of triggering event. Um, so in this one, there is an accident. Uh, Ellie's father has an accident and their life changes completely. They move to Echo Mountain um, and there's a witch and a healer and a mysterious boy and just sort of real life mystery elements added in around this this mountain adventure um, alongside a story of kind of grappling with a major life change and and sorrow um, so i think i think these two are quite similar in theme as they have a kind of magical realism element but an adventurous core as well but this is oh on the here it's comparing it to harper lee who wrote to kill a mockingbird so Maybe if you're a fan of that, you'll be a fan of this. So the Carnegie nominated books are Echo Mountain by Lauren Woke, The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson, Look Both Ways by Jason Reynolds, On Midnight Beach by Mary Louise Fitzpatrick, The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis, The Girl Who Became a Tree, A Story Told in Poems by Joseph Coyle, Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, and Run Rebel by Manjeet Man. I haven't had a chance to read all of these all the way through, so it's hard for me to really guess 
which one I think might win. I know they've been a fan of this author in the past, so maybe, um, but maybe it'll be something new. I don't know. I'll have to read through them more and decide which one I like best. So you can reserve these books. I'll leave a link to a list in our catalog of all these books that you can reserve um, to collect at your local Wandsworth Library branch. We are currently open 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. on our regular open weekdays and 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on Saturdays for click and collect and book returns only. So if you reserve one of these, we'll let you know when it's ready and you can come pick it up. And then please do let us know what you think, which one do you think should win? Or would you have nominated another book altogether? That's a good question too. We always love hearing from you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Next week, there will be another Story Explorers. Don't forget we have online rhyme time every weekday at 10 a.m. live from Facebook. And we have lots of story times and other events as well. So make sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter for all that good stuff. And I hope you are having a wonderful long weekend. Happy Easter if you celebrate Passover, if you celebrate that, and happy long weekend if you're just enjoying the time together as a family. All right, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining in. Bye-bye.